Hello to everyone. Uh, first of all, I want to express my deepest gratitude for this uh, invitation to such a prestigious event. And I also want to apologize for not being able to be in Belgrade. Uh, my teaching commitments here in Madrid, Spain, did not allow me to travel to Belgrade. I would have loved to do so in any case. Uh, I guess that uh, I met many of you in Rome uh, two years ago, in 2017, in one of the previous international conferences on the future of education, and I want to send my best regards to all those whom I met in person. Also, I want to congratulate the World Academy of Arts and Science and the World University Consortium for uh, this continuing effort to think about uh, the future of education, to examine the future of education. And this is unique. I'm not sure that there are, I don't think that there is actually such an ambitious program of conferences on education as the one undertaken by the World Academy and the World University Consortium. I cannot think of a task as important nowadays as that of thinking about education, not so much about our educational systems, but about the education of the human mind. And uh, it is always a privilege to take part in this kind of event. So thank you very much. And also a thank you to Gary Jacobs and to all those who are uh, have uh, worked in the organization of this conference. It is uh, clear that we live in an age of specialization, an excess of specialization, which many times impedes us from contemplating reality from an interdisciplinary and synthetic world. Uh, one of the tasks of the World Academy and of a conference of this nature is how can we develop what Howard Gardner has called a synthesizing mind. Indeed, how can we think critically of complexity, which is always one of the challenges of each uh, time? Are we prepared for a world in which everything is changing so quickly? Are we prepared for a world in which one of whose main ingredients is rapid technological development and the development of new uh, technological tools, even uh, of artificial intelligence? How can we cope with so much information and so much misinformation? Are not we overwhelmed by this quantity, this outstanding quantity of information? And how can we preserve respect, basic respect for truth, rigor, justice and honesty in a world in which so much misinformation is disseminated through the Internet? Furthermore, how can we re reconcile the need for a specialization, for analytic specialization, with the need for synthesis before the magnitude of the global challenges, which cannot be analyzed by a single discipline, but demand the convergence of different approaches? I don't want to be uh, pessimistic. If one asks me about the interplay between Education and Technological Development, which is actually the title of this panel, Rapid Evolution of the Educational System, Impact of Science, Technology and Politics, I want to be optimistic. I think that technology is opening new horizons, new opportunities, such that both the student and the teacher can design their own educational agenda beyond the re traditional rigidities of our educational systems. However, I do not want to be naive Education may be an ambiguous, an ambiguous tool for a, a technology can be uh, also can be ambiguous for education. It may be positive, but it also may be deeply negative for education. The challenge, of course, is in a world of more possibilities, how can we cope with these increasing these increasing dangers posed by technology? We have a wonderful opportunity for intellectual cooperation between disciplines and between cultural traditions, for mutual enrichment, in order to build bridges, creative bridges, between the humanities, the sciences, and also between theory and action, in order to cope with this challenge of making technology help education instead of seeing how many times, how Sometimes technology is uh, representing a danger for the education of the human mind in critical thinking and in creative thinking. <clears throat> uh, a few years ago, I attended a lecture by an expert from MIT here in Madrid who said that the future of education was going to be defined by four capital letters, S-T-E-M, Science, Technology, Education and Mathematics. 
I thought that his approach was extremely poor and impoverishing for any attempt at seriously thinking about the nature of education. Because what are we going to do with the humanities and the arts? Why should they not fit in that equation? Is only science and technology? Are science and technology the only tools we have for educating our minds? Indeed, I think, and I want to elaborate on this topic, that the humanities are equally important in this task of helping us develop a more critical, creative and free mind. Because the humanities teach us about our hom common human heritage beyond difference and fragmentation. And what, what we need to see is the sciences and the humanities not in opposition, not as uh, Charles Percy Snow's famous two cultures, but as complementary dimensions of the human intellectual adventure. After all, the goal of education is to teach us to think on our own as free and responsible citizens. And the challenge is how from our individuality, from the critical and creative exercise of our individuality, we can contribute to the improvement of society, to improving the world. The humanities can help us recognize the human beyond the difference between cultures and individuals. Thus, let us not exclude any source of inspiration in this fascinating challenge that we have before us, which is that of helping us cope with the complexities of our world. The sciences, the humanities and the arts can all, they complement each other in this task. The natural sciences help us understand the structure of reality. The scientific method has allowed us to discover the constituent elements of reality, the building blocks of matter, and the fundamental laws of nature. This is perhaps the greatest triumph of the human mind, which is clearly seen in the predictive power of scientific rationality. But from a philosophical perspective, I think that the beauty of scientific rationality resides also in another element, which is the development of a deeper awareness of what knowledge means. A scientific statement needs to be justified and validated. And scientists are well aware of the fallibility and the fragility of many of our statements. The wisdom in ignorance and the possibility of becoming aware not only of what we know but of what we do not know is perhaps also one of the most striking and illuminating features of scientific rationality. The humanities help us discover that which unites us, the human beyond its expressions. We all face the challenge of thinking about what it means to be human. This is a constant challenge in human history, what it means to be human. The natural sciences help us discover the material elements of our humanity. The social sciences help us understand the historical processes and the social forces that have shaped our humanity, the cultural forces that have shaped our humanity. And the humanities, the art, the, the philosophy, philology, many other disciplines, are also crucial, in my view, for not only helping understand human nature and human history, but helping us reflect on what we may be, on what it may mean to be human. The arts are the quintessence of creativity, and the arts can teach us a taste of beauty and a taste of expressivity. They can help us appreciate beauty and expressivity. If we combine the sciences, the humanities and the arts, we get a marvelous integration of knowledge, rationality, creativity, beauty. 
we may also learn to appreciate the beauty of knowledge beyond the utility of its practical applications in order to admire the glory of understanding and creating, which are certainly two of the greatest glories of the human mind, understanding and creating. In this way, I think that when one combines the scientific approach to reality, scientific rationality with the humanistic approach and the artistic view of the world, one can get to learn that there is a lot of art in science and there is a lot of science in art. And indeed, science is not, on, is not only the primacy of rationality, but it's also the triumph of imagination. No great scientific discovery would have been made without imagination. If we want to cope with the future, we need to learn to use technology to help us develop a diverse and interdisciplinary approach to reality in which the diversity of faculties of the human mind must not be seen, in my view, in opposition, but in harmony. Reason, imagination, emotions, empathy, creativity are not opposing forces, but complementary forces, forces which help us admire the wonder of the human mind through the sciences, the humanities, and the arts. The education of the human mind can therefore not be can not therefore be reduced to the education in science, technology, engineering and mathematics. This has to be complemented with an education in the humanities, with an education in the social sciences as well, and with an education in the arts, because they all help us understand what it means to be human. And the question about the future of education is closely related with the question about what it means to be human. To educate, in my view, means to develop understanding, comprehension, meta-intelligence, an intelligence of intelligence, an intelligence capable of analyzing what, it, what has been analyzed, a reflective intelligence that is constantly wondering and, is, and does not dare to challenge the principles that have guided its reasoning. To educate means to give us more possibilities. And the educational task can be conceived as a process of initiation in the fascinating adventure of wisdom, of knowledge, as an invitation that each of us has to follow individually. Of course, nothing can replace the individual, but our educational systems can accompany us in this responsibility of becoming better citizens, more free and more aware of the needs of humanity. Let us therefore think together about how we can use technology in order to increase possibilities instead of reducing them, and how technology can be an outstanding democratizing tool for increasing access to knowledge and democratizing access to knowledge. Today, it's absolutely wonderful that it is not necessary to uh, go to the best universities of the world in order to learn from the greatest minds of our time. Uh, many of their lectures are public, are publicly available in the internet. And I think that this is an absolutely wonderful democratizing opportunity, which we all must be proud because it's been a collective endeavor. Thus, and in order to conclude, because someone told me that I could only speak for 10 minutes and it's going to be almost 15 minutes, so I'm sorry for not fulfilling that stipulation. But in any case, um, I want to congratulate the World Academy for this new international conference on education, for bringing so many interesting minds from all over the world, from uh, people working in academia, theory, also practice, action, politicians, people working in international organizations, the United Nations, UNESCO. And um, I want to be optimistic about the interplay between technology and uh, education, because I think that we all have to be convinced that regarding we human, as human beings, few things are determined and we do not have to be fatalistic. 
technological development can be a very powerful tool for increasing opportunities. And in order to use technology, we need to combine the sciences, the humanities and the arts so as to develop a more a deeper a more critical reflection on the goals of education. I think that many disciplines are very good in helping us thinking about the means, about the material means, for example, the technological means that we may have, but it is also very important to think about the goals, the ends to which we have to direct those means. Let us not renounce any source of inspiration for this task of thinking about the goals, of thinking about the goals of education and of thinking about what it means to be human. Let us complement the natural and the social sciences, the humanities and the arts in this fascinating and necessary task. So thank you very much for your patience and thank you very much for the invitation.